If you are interested in passing the new Master Architect exam, well, we've been asked that question quite a lot. Joseph here with Swift Otter. I am joined by my accomplice, my partner in, I'm, we're not gonna say crime because we're in helping people. So our, our, our partner is here in building great training material and helping people pass Adobe Commerce certifications. And today's topic here is interesting about the Master Architect exam. Like I said, we've been asked about this a lot. And um, Chris here has recently attempted this exam. And we're going to share with you all of the details that of course are not covered by NDA. We're not gonna spill any beans that we shouldn't, but like what does it take in order to sit down for this test, to mentally prepare for it, and what are the expected outcomes? And they might be different than you would expect. So Chris, I am excited to have you on here, my friend, and to talk about uh, the Master Architect exam. Let's uh, talk about what is it first, right? Um, obviously, you're probably, well, most everyone who's watching this might even search for that AD0E718, you know, the Adobe code for this, et cetera. But um, past that, what would we say is a brief overview of what is this exam? Uh, that kind of, that that's something that I'm trying to get my head around too. Uh, because I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the master exam of all the ones that are available on Adobe Commerce. It's the mm -hmm. one that's the top level, right? It's harder than the mm -hmm. professional yep. level ones, harder than the expert level ones. Um, but they, but there's that naming convention that it's architect, not developer. And so going into it, I, I didn't know. What I discovered is like I, I, I definitely would not call solution architects the target audience for the exam. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I might call it like a tech lead master certification because the person I think the person this is intended for is that like top level developer mm -hmm. on the team who's not just writing code, but is also like shepherding everybody else's code and doing code reviews and is identifying the performance problems and, and the caching problems and the indexing problems uh, that you have on your site. So it's, it's, it gets quite into the weeds on, on very minute technical details, but from a standpoint of more like scenario based uh, or like analysis based mm -hmm. kind of questions. Nice, nice. Uh, then that's a great overview uh, about what the test is. Uh, one of the complaints that I've heard about this is that it's currently, and I don't know if they would ever change this, it is a 84% score in order to pass, which the previous one I think was in the low 60s, 62% if I remember correctly. So it was a, there's a massive difference in uh, the, the scoring level. And what, it, what do you remember as far as the difficulty of the questions on this new version compared to what the old version was, was is, is there a change in difficulty? Right, right. And that, that pass level is, seems nuts, right? Like 60% is what we all remember passing being in, yep. in school. And so I, I, this is like, I, this was kind of the, the trial run of taking this exam to figure out what's it going to take. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I probably won't pass this. Uh, and I definitely didn't get 84%, but I didn't get 60% either. Um, and so I'm probably not going to be able to go into the mists of time and my memory about the developer plus exam. But like I said, I just remember that one being like a more difficult version of the developer exam. Same kind of questions, but just like more detailed into topics. Um, whereas this one is always approaching things from a scenario basis. So like you are going to have to know uh, very specific details about technical architecture, uh, but you're you're going to be you're going to have to be analyzing those things from the standpoint of like, what are the implications if you try to do this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or you, you have this problem going on with, with uh, uh, you're getting stale data and, and, and you need to figure out what's going on with the cache here and, and, and what things are likely to the cause and things like that. And so I found that the topics, uh, the, the topics that usually left me guessing mm -hmm. for like making an educated guess on, on what the right, right answer might be, uh, were GraphQL definitely. Uh, there, there, I was surprised by the number of questions, at least in my pool of questions that I got, that had to do with mm. GraphQL and caching in GraphQL and uh, de complex definitions in the GraphQL schema, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And there were also quite a number of questions regarding uh, testing. So th things like mm. uh, things like fixtures in your integration tests and the the exact annotations for config fixtures in those integration texts uh, and things like that. Uh, quite a number of questions about deployment configuration, uh, about like the, 
you know, you have a multi-node architecture on your server and what do you have to do about that when it comes to things like your caching configuration um, or, or we're having problems with the way Fastly is operating and what might be the configuration issues with that. Um, so those are a few of the topics that, that definitely I, I, I did not come into it with confident answers for, for, those, for those areas and are probably the areas that, uh, I mean, with the exception of deployment configuration, things like GraphQL are areas that, I mean, that just wasn't part of the body of knowledge of Magento way back right. uh, when I took the developer mm -hmm. plus certification. So there's probably a combination here, uh, you know, just between the style of the test and the yes. kind of standpoint from which they want you to understand these things. But also it's going to be the test that most heavily hits the things that aren't every day and the things that are new to the <laughs> yeah. new to the framework since probably the, those of us who've been on in a while have learned Magento. Absolutely. And I think that's, uh, and thank you for sharing some of those, this challenging uh, aspects of the test. Uh, and that's why we're pulling this video together because I want to prepare th those out there. Um, you as our director of training, I want them, to, I want to, you know, we're getting your voice out there so that people understand what they are up against. Like this is, uh, I haven't personally taken it myself, but like this is what I, and what I hear as well, not only your feedback is, but like other people, this is one of the most difficult tests. And then to have an 84% on top of it, just to mentally prepare, you went into this, like you said earlier, thinking that you're not going to pass it. Um, and definitely got a score that was even lower than the sixties. Um, but you also didn't do a huge amount of preparation for it. So in that way, it was, right. it was a good assessment of those incredibly difficult topics. Um, you know, where one's at. And I think honestly, that's a really good place to, to start from um, as, as uh, we're, we're always continuing growing and learning. And um, yeah, so I think that's, I, I thought, I thought that was a really good starting place, but it still doesn't ease that internal pain of just how difficult this test is. And I mean, one of the trickiest aspects about my experience taking it honestly was the fact that uh, was the fact I felt good about more of my answers mm. than I than I actually got correct in the end, and then you know came came back after the exam, looked up some things I'd made some educated guesses on, and, and was like, oh great, I did make the right educated guess on that, um, and so like my my score on it was even even kind of didn't match my, my mm -hmm. general feelings uh, uh, about about my answers, um, so I think that goes down to just like the the standpoint of the questions that it's not not just mm -hmm. about like specific areas of knowledge, but is really about a really analytical, uh, analytical approach to scenarios mm -hmm. and stuff that makes it really tricky um, to, to be confident about what's the right answer in context. Yes, yes. And, and I think the other thing is that also makes it even more tricky is the fact that there are three objectives on this test. And to be really frank, none of them really are that studyable. So it's... No. Uh, it's, and I can all I can walk through them real quick here. I mean, there's there's nothing that concrete about any one of them. For example, first one is design. You know, design implement optimal solutions for Adobe Commerce. Number two is review, uh, review and refactor existing commerce customization and force coding standards. So there's maybe a little bit of, um, then also test frameworks and then configure and deploy. You know, so it's very general topics. So it's that's what makes it even harder to study for. So I would say for. Uh, to plan on at least two takes for to crack this exam and perhaps even throw a third one in there as well. Uh, you're on your first one. I think uh, you're going to crack it on the first, second one easily um, as you know, as we're making progress to building out this material uh, for uh, this test. But um, it's, it is no joke of a test. It is super, super difficult. And that's why I wanted to have a quick conversation just to ensure that everyone knows just how difficult this is. And now your now your prediction for my success on second try is a matter of public record. So we'll have to come <laughs> back, circle back around to that. But the, I mean, the yeah. objective list is like, the, the, unlike their other certifications, there's no, there's no, you can't map this objective list to topics nope. because like nope. design logical and technical flows, that's not a topic that you can study. So mm -hmm. uh, I have a hard time, I mean, with the exception of kind of like us, us going through and doing and and uh, tr blazing this trail for people to kind of uh, to kind of identify which really good 
yeah, really good topics to, to study. Mm-hmm. I think it's it, it'd be hard for somebody other than just experiencing it and seeing what what deficient kind of deficiencies they have with the topics that are on there uh, to really guess what the topics are going to be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so again, my my suggestion is, and Chris, if you think differently, um, just go take the test. You know, um, there there's discounts available different times of the year. Go go take the test um, right now. Uh, see what you see what the score you get is. Um, and, you know, our study materials will be available soon, and we're excited about that. Uh, take the test, and then you can start studying on those areas that you find yourself especially weak in. Um, but, yeah, we are, we are, we're working hard on this and excited to get some master archi- architect material into your hands that adequately covers the massive difficulty that this exam presents. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for joining me, Chris. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to doing some more of these videos for other subjects as well. So, you're watching this, stay tuned. Thanks a lot.